tonight. From Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals taking on Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League takes us to the Queen City of Cincinnati and Paul Brown Stadium right on the banks of the Ohio River. The enthusiasm of this Cincinnati crowd in full effect a moment ago as their Bengals took the field to the delight of the this sold out crowd and they're all set as they'll match up with the Miami Dolphins. Evan McPherson about ready to get this going as we are underway now from Paul Brown Stadium. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. Here is two a ton of Iloa heading out to lead this Miami success he had highest passer efficiency rating by a mile he's a guy who's had to share of detractors at the professional level but i do like his poise i do like his moxie and i love his accuracy on first down tongue of iloa on the right side open is gasicki and he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Sam Hubbard that time coming through defensively with reckless abandon. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. the handoff it's Gaskin and he'll get two maybe three up near the 37 just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry no not at all they did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here and that will be incomplete well they've got man coverage on the outside my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands they want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Here come the Bengals. And CD, of course, it's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback. And when you come into the league as the number one guy selected, a lot of hype comes with it. And sometimes that weight can be unbearable. But this young man... He took that weight on and handled it as well as you can imagine. And I love his ability to make a second, third reaction play and create downfield. Tackled that time by Jerome Baker out of Ohio State. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Here's Burrow. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. Now Burrow. Got an open man, that's C.J. Uzama. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense, getting to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Mixon with a first down carry. 
And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. That throw good for only a couple and brings up third down. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. He'll drop this one down to mix it. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. They're able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And Oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan, and he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Burrow will throw. And dropping it off underneath, here's P. Ryan. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 21. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them. And now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field gets to dense makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They go play action with Burrow. Open man is Uzama. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Here we go now on first and goal. This time Burrow will look to throw. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Gain of five, but still a decent ways from the end zone now on fourth and goal. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Does it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just a field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. Waddle is going to elect to not bring this out, and instead his guys will begin at the 25-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. On second and nine, Tua. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Trey Hendrickson. Able to get him for a loss of about three. In 
impressive individual effort there. No one was going to stop him around the edge. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's why if you play in a 4-3 base and you're a defensive end, that's why you get the big bucks. They count on you to do everything. Defend the run and, of course, get to the quarterback. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. And take it right at the 35. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung it as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And the Bengals will take over in terrific field position. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Burrow on play action. And Burrow going to be hit taken down they got him Jalen Phillips it'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him so that complicates things a bit here 18 yards to go now on second down Burrow gonna give this to Mixon he'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game you're not doing the dictating on defense and guess what now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They're looking for Higgins, but it is intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. Third down, passing down. They throw the extra defensive back in there for a nickel package, and it worked out. And it's not anything that you would think is just great strategy. It's just that when you have five defensive backs on the field and an obvious passing down, it's a lot tougher to complete a pass. And on that play, they completed it just to the wrong team, and it cost them six points. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. He's got it. He'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Brandon Wilson to return it. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Cincinnati set to take over once again. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 right at the 30. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. It gets this one to Boyd. Room here to run. And it'll take us to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Big play that time on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offense coordinator scheming his guy open just a little underneath route just trying to free up some space and it worked awfully well got him not just space but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage solid running on the carry but still brought down just inside of the 40. 42 yards on the ground for him so far. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. I also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And it'll be incomplete. Good job staying with him defensively. And it'll bring up second down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Throwing again on second and 10. Burrow. This is caught. It's Boyd. Is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. A big play that time through the air. 30 yards. Every defense.
defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. <laughs> Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now... And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Joe Mixon punching it in from a yard away. And the Bengals are going to jump back in front. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead is now 10-7. So this drive spans seven plays, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Waddle is going to elect to not bring this out, and instead his guys will begin at the 25-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Two and now on first down. Well, left side here, complete to the tight end, Gesicki. A gain of six there on first. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Looking to pass, Tua. And able to find Gesicki as tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Gaskin again on second down. And he is going to be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bengals 42. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Tua looking to throw on third and two. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 25-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Setting the throw on first down is Tua. He'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Three yards the game there, second down. Going to the air, tongue of Iloa. Being chased out left. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. Here's tongue of Iloa to throw. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. On the left hash mark, this is a 38-yard attempt. Sanders' kick is good, and that will knot us up at 10. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find a 
to get you into the end zone and get you six. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. <laughs> Whether it's the guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the uh, football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Now it's Burrow. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on it, and they pick up a first down. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. 63 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Three yards remain for second down. A handoff to Mixon. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard game, second and two. Second and two, Burrow. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Phillips able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. But you can almost see his eyes light up defensively. I mean, as a linebacker, that's about as quick as you can get to a quarterback. So what did your third-grade teacher teach you about straight lines, right? As soon as you have those, you take full advantage of them. He found a gap in the offensive line. right there and so far in this game the alleys have been open for them to get completions and they're taking advantage of it on first down Mixon and this carry terminated at the eight yard line good stick skill showing the power but just not much room to operate six yards on that last play here's second and four Here's a give to Mixon. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Third and two, now Burrow. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense. He's passed few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. McPherson's kick is good. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Here comes Jalen Waddle from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around.
been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Miles Gaskin and the rest of the Dolphin offense ready to get back to work here. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people, find some other playmakers, but always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. The Dolphins on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and eight. the 35. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup, and on this play, he finds it for the first down. Meanwhile, to his throw, take it in here by Fuller. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. From midfield, here's Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Second and two. Now Waddle on the jet sweep. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. This will complete to Jalen Waddle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. And now the throw going to Fuller, and he's got it. Seven yards to pick up there. Second down and three. Tua sets up to pass it. And quick throw here, that's complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Tua going to throw. And he's got his tight end, Gasicki, in the end zone. Touchdown, Dolphins. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Dolphins are once again going to retake the lead. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that will make this a four-point game. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. From his end zone, Wilson. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. 
get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Serve your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they give him the ball some space in some different ways here. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good head of steam going. 84 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Joe Mixon. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Now this one is tied in out on the right side, and he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 24-yard line. to get a couple second and eight coming up two minutes remaining in this first half of football We remind you in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Letting one go deep for the end zone. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Back of the end zone, can he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but contact and pass interference. And now where does the ball get placed? Yeah, at the one yard line. One yard line, they gave up excellent real estate on that one. That's the and this time he is in. Yes. Joe Mixon with his second touchdown here in this first half as his guys are able to regain the lead. Extra point by McPherson up and good and that gives him a three-point lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. Taken at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. To a tongue of Iloa in the offense heading back out. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know. If I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, it's Tua. Open man is Waddle complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Two and now on first down. Another catch there for Waddle. And a six-yard game gets him right around the 43. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. And again, it's Tungavailoa. Now a short one to Gesicki. 
They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. And that is incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially. So he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Feeling like they're not quite in field goal range yet. They're going to go for it on fourth. Tua on fourth down. Got a man. It's Waddle complete. Touchdown. Jalen Waddle as the first half is winding down. And the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that will make this a four-point game. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. The return man, Wilson. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Bengals drive about to get going as they take over here with 11 seconds remaining. First down, here's Burrow. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So that P.I. call will give him one more play. And it'll be an untimed play as well. Now the half will end after this one, unless there's another, there's another defensive one. penalty. McPherson's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much, and welcome, in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version it's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. From his end zone, Wilson. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. Back to Mixon on second down. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. This is Mixon. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. 106 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. The last run got six, now second and four. From the gun to give to Mixon. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And Burrow going to keep it himself. this call. Third and inches, and instead of worrying about getting it back to a running back and maybe there's some penetration from the defensive front, just go ahead and take it, move forward, and pick up the first down. And as we say often, shows confidence in your offensive line. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Good job 
there getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Once again, they run with Mixon. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lob has been power running. He decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. And they go play action now. Burrow. This goes out wide for Nixon. And he is out of bounds inside the third. I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film session, Very roughness. And you argue your case with your coaches. That's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. Now a carry for P. Ryan. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. It was Raquan Davis with the tackle. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. And now they will throw it with Burrow. That's caught by his tight end, Uzelma. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. They'll run here with Mixon. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. It's a gain of five, and now the question, will the offense stay out there on fourth and one? So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start, and then a nice tackle to finish things off. Touchdown, but he did get the first down as he tackled at the one. Play action. It's Burrow. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Taking it in for the yard out. And the Bengals have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive in the second half. Zach Taylor's made the decision. They'll go for two here. They're going to try and run. And he will find the end zone here. And the lead moves up to seven. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Waddle will return this from the end zone. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession. 
action of the second half. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offense's sails because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it down. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Trey Hendrickson, his second sack of the night. And you get the feeling, Charles, yeah, he's got the two sacks now, but he may get more here. We still got a quarter and then some to go. And the way that he is playing this game it reminds me of one of the best golfers in the world who can use every club in the bag and make a great shot. That's what he's doing with his pass rush moves right now, showing a little bit of everything. They have no way of stopping him. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. They'll run now with Gaskin. And he's able to get up here to the 26. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it breaks up fourth down. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? And they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. That's taken on the 25. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The sack recorded. It's a loss of five, and now it's second down. Another try after the first down sack. Burrow, quick slant caught by Chase. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. Mixon with it. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team right you gotta be able to put your nose in there smell where the first down sticks are and get there meanwhile burrow's throw taken in here by chase and he'll be brought down at the 48 yard line give him nine there on the first down completion Second down, here's Mixon. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Second and one, if people want to run the football, this is what every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Open man is Chase complete. Seven yards, the pick up there. Simple drag route here, lined up back left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, the defender was right on him. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. They will throw on first down with Burrow. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. To throw again on second down. Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. Well, let's 
take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead now up to 14. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Waddle will return this from the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked go to so something well. else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try to get something big and get things going in the excitement area. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying it up defensively. And now it brings out the third down. Here's Tua. And now another one thrown incomplete. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there. Watching for trouble on the road and making sure you get the team home. Bus driver. See if we can drive the bus here and get on this drive. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Off the play fake. Here's Burrow. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And that one incomplete. They try to sneak in a deep blow with the clock running down. the NFL on EA Sports. So after the second down in completion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. And that is incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. It has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. Miami set to take over. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Throwing now is Chugamailoa. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Fuller, and he'll be down at the 46. So they go from 146 to the other on a pickup of eight. Togamilo going to try and throw on third down. He'll get this out wide to Gaskin. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. In the early days of the NFL, you could easily blame these 
those drops on maybe some uneven or uncertain lighting in the stadium. Not anymore. The lights are pretty good. Yeah, they're great here at night, but his second drop in B, not a good look. Two is totally taken in by Parker. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, two is throw here, taken in by Gesicki. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Fighting a safety valve here. That's complete. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Well, that's not exactly how they drew that one up, nor practiced it, because on first down, you're trying to get some yardage to set up second and third down calls. In this case, had to drop it off to his running back. But, boy, they closed quickly on that one and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. Is Gaskin on the carry? That he's going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. We talked about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Sanders kick is good. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So the three points there at CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about Oh, he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. And Charles, at some point, he can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? He just has to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, looking for Waddle, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Mike Hilton. And they will be set up now as he brings his thing all the way back inside the 20. Here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, okay, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. On second down, Nixon, and he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with, and throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy to turn to. to, 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 to Don't change that. 
This game, it's been defensively oriented on both sides, so I guess it stands to reason that the play of the game comes on defense. So it's my kind of game. You know that. That's Anytime right. we have that's a defensive right. battle, but that, as you said, it stands to reason that's the way the game tilted. Someone had to make a big play, and the way the defenses were dominating, that's exactly what we got. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Now it's Wilson. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And they have to try and move past that pick six because now they're dealing with a fourth quarter deficit. And they need this drive to end in points. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards. Second down. Second down and eight. Burrow throw. That is caught. It's Uzama. And able to get. 
get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Now a man open down the middle of the field. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Now P. Ryan. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeout. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Burrow. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. A big connection on that one. 31 yards. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards with that big play right there. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. P. Ryan. And he is here. Touchdown. Samaj P. Ryan taking it in for four yards out. And the Bengals have taken the lead here on the fourth. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get them over the goal line. Extra point by McPherson up and good. And the lead is now two. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. is going to let to not bring this out and instead his guys will begin at the 25 yard line the dolphins at the line ready for their next drive and last time one play interception so this offense they should be fresh <laughs> that's a good way of putting it and i can't wait to see and he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure there's sam hubbard that time in there to bring him to the ground so if we recount real quick he had the touchdown earlier and now he comes up with the sack here no doubt about it, he's having himself a game. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be a third and about 13. into the hands of Gesicki, and he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Tonga Vailoa. Rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Mike Hilton. And he will bring it back. It's a big six for the Bengals TD. And so much for the game-winning two-minute drive. I think that interception return there pretty much steals the deal. And one thing to keep in mind, in this situation with the score that close, defense isn't backing off and just giving you easy throws. They're playing aggressively as well and end up picking that one off and sealing the deal for themselves. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And it might seal the deal as that makes it a two-score game here with not a lot of 
seven remaining. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Waddle is going to elect to not bring this out. And instead, his guys will begin at the 25-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And fresh off the pick six. They've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, he's got to be like what we talk about with defensive backs who get beat for a long touchdown. Short-term memory, right back out there doing the things that he does best and knowing that taking care of the ball is paramount. Here's his opportunity. It comes back to those defensive backs for the formal D, former DB, right? I, I don't know where that comes from. It just kind of emerges out of me for some it's reason. deep in there, right? <laughs> Finding Gaskin underneath. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Tua. Eluding the pressure right. Oh, it gets loose right side. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Here's Tua. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. Tua to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. And let's face it, this defense has had to share struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. And it's caught. He's got it for a late touchdown. Probably a little too late. It would take a miracle of epic proportions if they're going to pull this one off. Sanders now to add the extra point. the lead is down to two so that a seven play 80 yard drive so looking at this situation you should have time for the onside kick and then at least one play and this is going to be recovered by the hand team and that should just about put a camper on this one but a fourth quarter they felt like they needed the football back unfortunately they couldn't get it Here we go. and I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Got an open man, that's C.J. Uzama. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win. What if the that they did? What were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves. 